Hi. As you've probably noticed, I'm not the president. I'm just a citizen. And as a citizen, I'm here at the White House today because I want to make a difference, and I hope you will join me. My name is Francine Wheeler. My husband, David, is with me. We live in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. David and I have two sons. Our older son, Nate, soon to be 10 years old, is a fourth grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Our younger son, Ben, age six, was murdered in his first grade classroom on December 14th, exactly four months ago this weekend. David and I lost our beloved son, and Nate lost his best friend. On what turned out to be the last morning of his life, Ben told me, quite out of the blue, I still want to be an architect, Mama, but I also want to be a paleontologist, because that's what Nate is going to be, and I want to do everything Nate does. Ben's love of fun and his excitement at the wonders of life were unmatched. His boundless energy kept him running across the soccer field long after the game was over and he couldn't wait to get to school every morning. He sang with perfect pitch and had just played at his third piano recital. On April 13th, 2013, in lieu of himself giving a presidential address, Obama had this couple speak, David and Francine Wheeler, parents of Ben Wheeler, who allegedly died in the Sandy Hook shooting four months previous. Man, that must have been so sad for the Wheelers, right? Such an unbelievable story as a six-year-old with perfect pitch who wanted to be an architect and several piano recitals under his belt. What a little Mozart. If you Google when the Wheelers moved to Newtown, you get several articles, all of which say they moved to Newtown in 2012, just months before the shooting, okay? April 2012 to be exact. Oh, hi. Great to see you. Hi, welcome to the Ben Wheeler Show. Today, the tornadoes are coming and the elevator is Benny coming. was a challenge. Ah! A six-year-old boy with that much energy. Ah! Dinner table was so hard because he was just all over the place. Oh, now to go and have some popsicles. Bye. Francine's uncle took this amazing picture of him when he was three or four. It's up in the living room and he's jumping into a puddle and he's, you know, above the air. And her uncle titled it Flying Boy. And that, that's who he was. He was so rarely connected to the earth. He was just, nothing was ever moved fast enough for him. You know, the way everyone does, you mark your kid's height on the wall. This is Nate's here and Benny's here, starting in January of 09 um, and then in November of 2012, he was here. Wow, looks like he grew exponentially for a six-year-old who should have had no pubescent growth spurts yet. Wait, hold on, so they were in the same house in 2009 and 2012? Hmm, that's impossible. The first six results, Googling, showing that the Wheelers, who both have IMDB accounts, as in their actors, with David Wheeler having 10 years experience as an actor in New York City, show the Wheelers moved to Newtown in April 2012. So I guess the Darien Times, San Francisco Gate, New Haven Register, NPR, and Connecticut Post all got it wrong, huh? Francine Wheeler worked for Maureen White, a finance chair for the Democratic National Committee, who was even invited to the White House by the Clintons. Maureen White is married to controversial Wall Street figure Stephen Ratner, who was a member of Democrats for Bloomberg. Ratner played a part in a kickback scheme involving Democratic funds. Ratner also worked for Obama. So there's two degrees of separation from these totally random, grieving parents who are totally not actors, and the most murderous president in recent history, who drone striked literally ten times as many people as Bush. Next, you're going to tell me that one of the parents came out to a press conference 24 hours after his child was killed, laughing with a beaming smile that he automatically changed when he realized cameras were rolling. Statement uh, looks like the family is there, and they're getting ready to make uh, to come to the microphone. So we'll listen. Start. Okay.
My name's Robbie Parker. Okay, but all the news media couldn't be in on it, could they? I would have to see Anderson Cooper's nose literally disappear as if he was green screened in to news articles about it to believe my fair and balanced news sources like CNN wouldn't commiserate against my rights so nefariously. Oh. I wonder if this is in any way related to Obama repealing the smith munt Act, which prevented government from propagandizing to the American people through media. Wouldn't that be fucked up if there was a president that not only killed thousands of children abroad, but for some reason went into crying fits when 20 of them were killed in Connecticut? I can only pray that he's a black guy, so that people who have deep-seated white guilt and racism can feel alleviated by casting their precious and meaningless vote towards a president who committed a whopping 540 drone strikes, killing 3,797 people, including 324 civilians. A guy who would tell a senior aide in 2011, quote, turns out I'm really good at killing people, didn't know that was going to be a strong suit of mine, end quote. Who knew that in Blue No Matter Who, the who was actually a bunch of children who live in Pakistan, whom we are totally okay with being ripped apart by bunker-busting bombs, because they might live in the vicinity of a so-called terrorist. However, when an alleged 20-year-old who was autistic and had no social media despite being a computer science major kills 20 kids in Connecticut, we say, we need to get rid of those guns that his mother completely legally owned and that no legislation would have changed the events of anyways. Since the beginning of the war in Iraq, 500,000, that's a half million, children under the age of 12 have been murdered in Iraq. If you're really sad about children dying, you should probably not support those wars. Or the president with the highest child body count in those wars, even if he's a black guy. If it's all true and there's no conspiracy afoot, let's just go to the school and take some samples and pictures and such and set this conspiracy theory to rest. We can't actually do that because the government is melting down and demolishing the school, and the demolition team had to sign NDAs. Nothing suspiciously reeks of government cover-up there. Columbine High School was not demolished, it still stands, and none of the gore is or will be scrubbed from the internet. But just trust the government when they say that there are no pictures of Sandy Hook gore whatsoever, and that Adam Lanza's AR-15 shot through bulletproof glass. Just believe them about that. Because if you don't believe that, you're racist. The FBI has a statewide report for violent crimes every year. The 2012 report shows zero murders in Newtown. The FBI claims this is a clerical error. Uh-huh. The only thing that would make this case crazier is if there was a father of one of the victims that uh, claimed that he held his son with a bullet in his head, even though none of the parents were anywhere near the children during the shooting. Then you would definitely believe that Obama was a propagandist tyrant who was using state media like Stalin to convince you of fake child murder in order to take your rights away like Hitler. I don't personally care about guns, but today it's guns and what's it going to be tomorrow when they can propagandize to you like that and so much of the general public believes this horseshit, believes Obama to be the gentleman in the storm of Trump's bluster, to be somebody who's sophisticated, peaceful organizer and not at all a propagandist tyrant. If they can do all this unopposed because of the color of the guy's skin, imagine what they could do if there was a black woman 